We try really hard here to create a safe environment for our pupils in all ways. And I don't just mean safe in a safeguarding sense. I mean safe as in somewhere where I can try things out and make mistakes and I won't be criticised for it and I won't feel bad for it. The pastoral care for the senior schools, I suppose, split into year seven and eight. We were our heads of year and our head of lower school and that's a lovely introduction to the school. As they move into year nine, they move into the house system and it creates little communities. So we have eight forms in year seven, eight forms in year eight, each with around about 23 or 24 people in it. We might try and make sure there's a good gender split in there um, and a reasonable split of people from our own junior school and people coming from outside. So you form a really close bond that provides enormous security for people, particularly in the first few weeks. And that allows them to get to know lots and lots of people and really provides a, a basis for flourishing. So over the course of two years, that form tutor will get to know the form incredibly well and they will really be able to dive into that person's character and help them make the most out of the lower school. When you move into the house system, things open up a lot more. So you have registration every morning with your tutor group, but your lessons are much more mixed up, so you meet a much broader range of people. You're in the same house as pupils all the way up to year 13. The house is really the kind of the social and the pastoral backbone of the school. A pupil's first port of call is their tutor, but the head of house is there really to oversee their development, whether that's academic or pastoral, throughout their time at the school. I think the vertical system means that the head of house knows you pretty well. There's a length and a continuity to the relationship from the pupil and from the parents, because they're there for both, that is a real strength in the school. In thinking about whole school wellbeing, we're thinking about the wellbeing of the pupils. We're also thinking about the wellbeing of the parents and teachers, so that they can produce the best kind of environment for your children. I manage a wellbeing service in the school that has two counsellors at the senior school, a counsellor at the junior school, and a play therapist at the pre-prep. I work very closely with a wellbeing officer in the senior school where pupils can just drop in to see her if they have any concerns or worries, and she helps to think with them about whether they need further help. One question I'm often asked, or at least I often think might be in the minds of parents in particular, is will my children do well and be happy? And my answer to that is almost certainly yes. There's loads of people here doing well and being happy in all sorts of different ways. And I think that's the key. There's lots of different ways to do well and there's lots of different ways to be happy. You can do well academically, you can do well sportingly, you can do well in making loads of really great friends, you can do well through your community service and you can be happy because you've got loads of friends or happy because you've just got a small group of two or three. What I can't do is say, if you do this, you will be happy. And people are happy at Highgate because of X. Rather, it's because of A to Z. All the things that we put in place to try and create the foundations in the atmosphere which allow everyone to, to find their niche. Whether your thing is Vex Robotics and making robots down in DTE, or scoring a hat-trick on the hockey pitch, or creating the most beautiful art project, writing the perfect geography answer. All of those are equally fantastic and happiness making and equate to doing well.